Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the series of Python for beginners. And as you can see on my screen, today we are going to talk about the concept of oops. So before moving in the video, if you have not subscribed my channel, kindly do so. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. So we are going to talk about the first thing in the oops is object oriented programming system is what we know we call as oops is all about creating objects. An object is a group of interrelated variables and function. And these are created within a class. Object oriented programming is famous because it implements the real world entities like objects, polymorphism, inheritance, encapsulation, etc. in your program. Why? Because it makes visualization easier because it's very close to today's real world scenarios. Let's move forward and talk about the concepts. The first concept is class, second is objects, third is polymorphism encapsulation, inheritance and abstraction. So these are the topics that we are going to talk. Now I have divided this video into two parts. In the first part, we are going to talk about the first three points, which is class, objects and polymorphism. And in the later video, in the, which, is, which is the second part, we'll talk about the encapsulation, inheritance and abstraction. So let's dive into the first topic, which is class. So what exactly is a class? A class is a collection of objects. It is just a blueprint or a prototype. So it is created by word class. So it, that's a keyword and it has some attributes inside it. So these attributes are always public and can be accessed through using the dot, which is you can see on here. Now there are two ways to access it. First, you can access through class name dot my attribute. So if your class is dog and its attribute is height, you can write dog dot height. That's how you access it. And the other way is to create an object for it. And then by using that object, you can call direct the attribute. So that's how it works. So let me show you the syntax. So this is how it looks like. So you have to give a keyword class and then the class name. After that, a colon. So class name can be anything of your choice. Then you co there comes a class body, can have methods and statements and your attributes. So that's how it works. Let's dive into the ne next thing, which is the object. It's very important. So what is an object? So let's explain it this way. When we define a class, only the description or a blueprint of the object is created, which we talked about in a previous slide. There is no memory allocation until we create its object. So the object or instance contains real data or the information. So what is the syntax? Syntax is you can give an object name like obj. This is your choice. You can give it anything. And then the class name with colon in front of it. Sorry, brackets in front of it. So for example, an object has a class dog. So let's say there is a class which is dog has dogs. So it will be having three things. So object always have these three things. The first is the state. Second is the behavior. And third is the identity. So what is a state? State is like what a breed, what, what breed does your dog has and what's the age, what's the height and stuff. Behavior is something like whether he's barking, sleeping, running, just fooling around. And third one is the identity, which is the name. So these are the things that is associated with an object almost every day. Let's talk before moving forward, talk about the self. It is important because we are going to use it in our programs today and it's better for you to understand it right now. So what is the self? So class methods must have an extra parameter in the method definition. We do not give a value for this parameter when we call the method Python provides. it. So when you create a function and opt, make a call through an object, it expects a value. So if there is no value that you got, if there is no value, you have to provide self over there so that uh, it recognizes the call and the, the function gets executed. The next point is if we have a method that takes no arguments, then we still have, have to have one argument. Self represents the instance of the class by using the self keyword. We can access the attributes and methods of the class in Python. Let's talk about polymorphism now, which is the third concept for today. So what does polymorphism stands for? So polymorphism simply means having many forms. So poly means many, many and morphism means form. So this, that's why it simply means having many forms. For example, we need to determine if the given species of birds fly or not using polymorphism. We can do it with this using a single function. We'll take an example for that also for today. And Let's consider another case in which we have a class dog. Another thing, it has three state behavior and identity. 
like greed and age, barking or sleeping or a name. So these three th things it has. So if you would have used a bird class, what would be the state? Could be breed, could be age, could be weight or anything else. Behavior is like eating, flying and an other, other, other thing that it can do and identity if it has a name. Okay, like sparrow or pigeon, etc. Let's move forward. Okay, before moving forward, these are two things that we need to talk about before moving in our demo. First is the init method and second is the pass. So what does it stand for? So the init method is similar to constructor like we have in Java and C++. It is run as soon as the object of a class is instantiated. The method is useful to do any initialization you want to do with your object. Also, it is one of those reserved method in Python. Reserved method means you cannot create it again. In object-oriented programming, it is known as the constructor. This method can be called when an object is created from the class and access is required to initialize the attribute of the class. So this is how init works. Second thing is pass. In Python, pass is almost equal to a null statement. So the interpreter does not ignore a pass statement, but nothing happens when it goes through and the statement results into no operation or no activity at all. So the pass statement is useful when you don't write the implementation of a function but want to implement in the future. So you just write pass over there and people will think that you do not need to do anything else or Python will not do any kind of activity over there. So with that being said, I hope you have understood everything till here. Next three concept concepts will be in the new video. And whatever we have talked about, let's dive right into the demo to understand all of them. So let's move on to our program. So the first program is class and objects. As you can see on my screen, the class is dog and it has two attributes, which is breed and build. So the breed is Alaskan and the build is medium. Now we are adding a def add function over here in which there are three attributes, sorry, three parameters, self, a and B. Self, we have already explained that why we have used it. A and B, it is what that it is going to accept. So A and B are the parameters over here. What it is what it is doing with A and B, it is just returning the value by adding both of them. Now, we are creating an object one of class dog. So as soon as we as we create this object, it will get all the attributes or the properties of class dog. So this is the real place where it is getting in instantiated. Now we are just printing four times. Now how are we doing it? First we are calling through an object and calling through a breed which is Alaska. In the second one same through an object by doing dot operator and build which is this and it will print medium and then by using the class name which we already talked about. So class is dog dot breed and it's going to print the same thing which is Alaskan and in the fourth statement fourth print statement what we are doing is we are making a call to the function which is add this add function is inside class dog how do i know it because of indentation now we are passing two values 20 and 30 over here and then once a and b gets the value it will print the sum sorry return the sum and this will be printed over here so let's just run it so let me just clean this and this is 0 1 class is an object and you can see the Alaskan value medium Alaskan and 50. This is what is printed and what we suspected. So I hope this is clear by now. Let's move on to the polymorphism part and let me just clear this. Okay, not clear CLS. Perfect. Now pay attention over here. We have created three classes over here. Bird, Pigeon, Ostrich. Bird is a super class kind of a thing. And inside that we have Pigeon and Ostrich. Now, don't get confused of like when I say super class, super class is something like when you inherit something out of something, which is we are not going to talk about the inheritance today. It's just bird is kind of a like general class and inside that you have pigeon and ostrich. But here class ostrich is a separate class. Pay attention. Class pigeon is a separate class and class bird is a separate class. But the type is different. Now this is just a simple class in which we have two functions, two methods, introduction and flight. Self, self. This is nothing out of the box. This is just a general thing. But here just pay attention. Pigeon and ostrich are accepting type class in their parameter. Now once this happens, so what happens over here? 
as soon as we create an object of bird class what will happen is it will get all the all the access to both of them how because the object already knows what it is has of it class so it is easy to make a call if i create obj bird of this to make a call to this function and this function this is this is easy this is nothing out of the box but pay attention to pigeon and ostrich what is happening now after we pass through this we are creating an object underscore spr for pigeon now pigeon does not have an introduction function what will happen but it has the flight function so this is fine if i make a call object underscore spr to flight it will make a call over here and it will print pigeon can fly but what happens in case of introduction i do not have any introduction function over here what will happen now just because of this type the class we created it got the properties from bird and then the introduction will be getting a will be getting a call so the same function is there flight 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 but it will make a different call so now if i make a call object underscore spr introduction it will make a call to this function and does not make a call to this so that's how it works and similar would be the case of object ost on flight so flight would be the one which gets the call over here because this has but when you make a call from object to st to the introduction it will make a call over here at the end and print this so let's just run it and it would be easier for you to understand so let's give it 0 2 polymorphism p1 and you can see three separate calls like this like this and like this from three separate objects from of three separate class types so i hope you guys have understood it this is a quite tricky thing which is because we are creating a class with the argument that accepts bird type argument so that's why the result is like this let's move on to the init method now this is quite tricky over here let me just clean it and pay very good amount of attention over here let me just put it a bit over here so that you guys can see perfect now let me just run this and then i'll make it easier for you to understand so that i can just explain one by one zero three now how it is printed first of all there is a doge class that is created okay and it has an attribute of good boy nothing out of the box pretty much simple let's move on to the instance attribute so the init function which we explained is accepting a self and a name and this self dot name will be the current value okay so this is just a function in it now we'll instantiate the object so as soon as we create an object of doge class with this name, with this object name Chiva and Hachiko, this will be instantiated. Now this value is go over here on and for, uh, for it will accept as a name. And once this gets created, it will accept Hachiko as the name in the parameter or the argument that is passed. Now if you want to access the class attribute, this is what we, uh, this is what we come across. So first print is Chiba is format dot format is the type of a function that we use so function inside a function this is print function and this is format inside a function you can use that chiba which is this object dot class dot attribute so this class's attribute is good boy so it will print chiba is a good boy which is this again the same thing happened but at the current one current class one is the dot attr which is attribute good boy so again it will print and Hachiko is also a good boy, which is this. But now here, when we access the instance attributes, how it will, so this is a class attribute and this is the instance attribute, just pay attention to this. So my name is dot format, and what will happen over here is chiba dot name. So chiba is this, and what is the name? This. So this will print chiba dot name equal to chiba and Hachiko dot name equal to Hachiko. This is quite tricky. You can just uh, download the code from my GitHub repository and practices and try to understand it. If there is any issue in, a, in any of these Python classes or the Python program that we have used, feel free to comment below and we'll try to address there also. So I hope you have understood it. If there is an issue, again, I'm repeating it. Please try to, uh, please comment below and we'll address that. Address that. So thanks guys and I will see you in the next video.